Welcome Star Wars fans to episode 6 of Tatooine Sons. This week, we'll be looking at the heroic journey of Finn in The Last Jedi. There's been another infamous Star Wars Lego leak, this time for the upcoming Solo movie. And on that note, we'll be sharing our ideas of legendary Star Wars characters who might make an appearance in Solo. I uh, had a slight weapons malfunction, but uh, everything's perfectly alright now. We're fine. We're all fine here. Thank you. How are you? It's time for Tatooine Sons. The Force is strong in my family. I am your father. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Welcome, Star Wars fans. This is Tatooine Sons, your weekly look into all things Star Wars. From the unique perspective of a father sharing his love for the amazing space fantasy saga with his two sons. I am BB Nate, and I'm joined first by my brother, Samuel the Hutt. A true to Star Wars fans, uh, thanks for tuning in. And if you're not a Star Wars fan, I, I guess you can deal with the other movies in the box office right now. Well, maybe not. After last night, I'm not so sure. <laughs> But anyway, okay, sorry. Okay. And of course, you can't have Star Wars without bizarre father figures. So on that note, here's my dad, the bowtie Jedi guy. I'm, I'm covered with sores and itching. And so if I start like having a scratching fit and you hear that on the mic right now, uh, forgive me. Um, <laughs> well, don't have a scratching fit. <laughs> no scratching fits during that. At least it's, a, it's audio and most of the time people aren't going to see me doing it. I'm yeah. trying not to scratch at all because that's miserable. So anyway, how's everybody like, doing today? Fine. Fine. I guess we should explain my little comment about the movies. Yeah, yeah. That were out. Um, we went and saw The Greatest Showman last night. P.T. Barnum, great guy. Love his yeah. story. Fun. Yeah, it's fun an story. movie. Yeah. yeah. What did you guys think about The Greatest Showman it's, overall? It moved. It's all right. To me, I would have rather it, watched the last Jedi. Yeah, same here. But to me, it moved too fast. Yeah. Started out him as a poor boy. I need more backstory. <laughs> you need more backstory. Oh my gosh, he's been talking. He's been paying too much attention to the Last Jedi haters. <laughs> well, right. I need more backstory. No. <laughs> it's just it kind of went in. He's running around stealing bread, and then he finds a show and right. gets a big house. Like, well, we, we can't go into it in too much detail. Yeah, but right, the reason let's, let's that somebody to start. Well, we could, but the reason that he. You know, the, the, they showed him as a child as a show that he came from nothing and that the only person that showed him any care when he was living on the streets, homeless and, and without a, a parent, without parents as an orphan was this disfigured, uh, deformed person that gave him an apple and gave right. him something to eat. And that's what triggered him to have right. care for them. So it was, a, it was a cool story. But anyway, I, let's just be honest. Yeah. Movies like The Greatest Showman, while it was fine for a couple hours... Make us appreciate movies like Star Wars and The Last Jedi a whole oh, lot yeah. more. Well, we already appreciated it well, enough. We appreciate well, we've it appreciated more. it five times. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even more. That's one way to put it. And depending on whether or not um, your mother, my amazing, beautiful, and stunning wife, um, who decides to get out today or not, we might be seeing it a sixth time um, <laughs> if she doesn't want to get out. So we'll see. All right. So that takes us, you know, a lot of people have appreciated this movie. Mm -hmm. um, our poll haven't. last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, others haven't. But our poll last week kind of talks about that. We asked last week, what do you think will be the final box office take of The Last Jedi? So let's talk about our poll results. So um, we had four different choices. We had less than a billion dollars. Which, honestly, by the time we put the poll up, it had already exceeded a billion dollars. So, those of you that answered that, um, you were wrong. Um, <laughs> 1 billion to 1.25 billion was the second one. 1.25 billion to 1.4 billion and more. And the winner, with 36% of the vote, out of 88 votes, which isn't too bad. It wasn't as... as um, sensational of a poll as, as some other topics topics we've talked about but uh, 1.25 billion to 1.4 billion got 36 percent of the vote mm -hmm. um, second place was more uh, would be getting it would be getting more than 1.4 billion uh, third place was one to 1.25 billion and for 15 percent of the people that voted on our poll um, by the time you voted it had already cleared a, mil a billion and you probably should have just checked um, like box office mojo or something before you voted uh, in the poll. But anyway, that was the poll for last week. Honest, uh, let's kind of give an update. We are right now, um, as of 
yesterday, January 5th, a worldwide box office take for The Last Jedi is $1.129 billion. So those of you that voted in that $1.25 to $1.4 billion, you're kind of... We're on the edge. It might not make it. We'll have to see. What do you guys think? Is you, gonna, you think it's going to clear $1.25 billion before yes. oh, it yeah. gets out of it? Right. Probably, yes. It's <laughs> awesome. It did become the highest grossing film of 2017, even mm-hmm. though it was only in theaters for two weeks right. of, the, of the year. So that was pretty awesome. Okay. Well, let's um, get on the show and get into the first topic today. So we are going to talk about Finn's character arc in The Last Jedi, what his whole story was and everything about that. And shout out to S Cubed Pod for being so engaged with us on Twitter. He's been liking, sharing, retweeting, retweeting commenting, yep. Oh, yeah. all, all that about. stuff. Awesome follower on Twitter. Being engaged with so. us. So. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's S Cubed Pod, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. S Cubed at S Cubed Pod. Thank you so much for that. All right, guys. So, what do you think about Finn and this uh, um, his character in, in the Last Jedi? I guess it live audio. Um, I guess it um, picks up right where the Force Awakens left off, like the rest. So, what? Where did where did we start with? What's the first thing that we experienced, Nate? BB Nate. And thank you to Port Haven Forums for uh, informing me last week that I call BB Nate Nathan throughout the show, and I call Samuel the Hut Sam all throughout the show. So I don't even call them by their their moniker. So I'm going to call them. I'm going to work on that today. Uh, that Sammy's shake. Sam <laughs> Yule the Hut is shaking his head. All right, uh, BB uh, Nate. Uh, uh, wh- where do we start with Finn in the Last Jedi? We started with him waking up and. Finn naked leaking bag. <laughs> Finn <laughs> naked leaking bag. What did you fry a chip? Yeah, <laughs> no, that's what BBA says. So we find that, and then he is. His first question is, "Where is Ray?" Yeah, like that's like one of the first thing he says when he wakes up is Ray, and then it, the right. second Where's thing Ray? he says is, "Where is Ray?" That's the first thing he says in the whole movie, mm-hmm. which is directly tied to what happens in the Force Awakens. His whole story arc in the Force Awakens, after he gets off the destroyer with. Poe and he meets Rey on Jakku. Mm-hmm. Everything for the rest of the, the movie, The Force Awakens, for Finn's character is him trying to rescue Rey, him trying to protect Rey, his relationship with Rey. So we pick up in exactly the same moment. We left him having just been sliced up his back by uh, Kylo Ren in The Force Awakens and he's in a back to suit thing, which is yeah. the first time we've seen that, which is kind of weird. It's pretty new technology. Yeah. Like it. Um, and he's... Um, unconscious when we leave The Force Awakens. And then he wakes up after this uh, first attack on the Dreadnought um, in The Last Jedi. And his first question to Poe is, where's Rey? Right. And yeah. so um, that's where our story begins. Sam, where does it go from there? Well, he uh, right, he learns about that beacon or whatever that um, helps Rey find where, wherever the Resistance is. And then they get under attack, and he tries to take the beacon and escape, so that way Ray doesn't come back to a doomed fleet in his mind. That's, he thinks it's a doomed fleet in his mind. So, yeah, I mean, why is he trying to escape with the beacon, though? Right, to save Ray. that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, cause to keep Ray from coming back to that... To the... To, right. To, what, what, to, to the what resistance, was, right? Right, because they're going to die. Or at least that's what he thinks. Right. So, um, he, he was kind of being selfish... Uh, trying to escape, take the beacon, you know. I mean, it was trying to help save Ray, but still. It was well, it's consistent with his character, though. That's true. Because if we remember, when we're at Maz's castle in The Force Awakens, he's there, um, you know, trying to... He's trying to get away from the Resistance mm-hmm. still. He's willing to actually abandon Ray at that point yeah. in Maz's castle in order to get away from the Resistance, to get away from the First Order. He just wants to... To live a life, right? Um, get away from everything, get, yeah. es- escape, and then when he realizes that Ray's been captured, then he becomes about rescuing Ray. Mm. But the idea of him being away from the resistance, him getting away from the battles, getting him away from the conflict, and saving Ray is exactly who Finn's character is. And uh, but th- then he encounters um, Kelly Marie Tran's character Rose, Rose. Rose Tico as he's trying to escape. From the, um, the the cruiser, the resistance fi- uh, ship, mm-hmm. uh, on that, and what tell what happens in that part of the the story? Uh, 
she's she adores him because she like she says she only works behind pipes and doesn't talk to resistance heroes and Finn does say that he is in a resistance hero right but the is, idea is she's you know we again we still don't know the time lapse between the end of right the force awakens at least from okay not from the end of force awakens but from the um the destruction of star killer base to this moment mm-hmm. uh, when when Finn wakes up, we don't know exactly how long that is, but apparently it's been long enough for sort of you know we talked a lot about the legend of Luke Skywalker in previous episodes, sort of the legend of Finn the Resistance yeah, hero to start bit. to take root. Mm-hmm. And Kelly Marie Tran- Rose Tico has this idea of Finn is this hero. I'm sort of a big deal of the Resistance, right? You know the things that he right. said about himself it, as a, she she acts much like a. a Though in, in the way that we would react if we met uh, <laughs> an actor for oh yeah, I mean if we re- if and we if met John like, Boyega, right. we would be taken aback by that. Right, we would have been acting the same way. So it's very she reacted in a very similar starstruck, manner. yeah, by him. Right. Mm-hmm. So so she's seeing him as this hero, and this you know he was willing to sacrifice his life to save the resistance. He and Ray, and right. she's got this image of him in her head and she's talking about how her sister Paige and her had talked about him and he had inspired them mm-hmm. and what is he getting ready to do? Escape. Yeah, be a coward be and hightail retreat. it out of there. Now I think this is really yeah. interesting because this is a, in a microcosm. This one scene kind of summarizes a lot about what this movie is like and, and especially what's going to happen with Luke Skywalker in this movie. There's this idea of the things you think about your heroes are not necessarily who they really are mm-hmm. um, with it. And there's lots of, you know, that happens a lot. We look up to people, we admire people, we see them, we see the best of them, but then as we get to actually meet them or know them as a real person, we find out that even the greatest people in the world have flaws. Even the greatest people in the world probably aren't the, um, the caricature, so to speak, of what we think they are, mm-hmm. that they're not that they're a lot more like us than we than we assume, and in right. some cases their flaws um, make us question who they are altogether, which yeah. is what happens yes. with Kelly Marie, with Rose uh, Tico mm-hmm. uh, in this movie. So he tries to escape. Uh, Rose zaps him with the the stun thing, Taser. and what happens next in the in the storyline, Sam Samuel oh. the Hut? Sorry. Uh, well, he wakes up and explains. What he was doing, why he's doing it, because he's talking about the beacon or whatever. Mm-hmm. Then they figure out that they're being tracked from the Star Destroyer. Right. And then they figure out a plan to get on to the Star Destroyer. Mm-hmm. They talk to Maz to figure out how they get in. Maz says that you need a codebreaker, and he's at Cantabite, and they leave and they go to Cantabite. Right. But in that scene, there's a couple really interesting things that I wanted to, to, to mention. First of all, you start to feel to see. Um, you learn about Rose and and Finn in a in a unique way as he's sort of stunned, paralyzed, and she's dragging him, and they're trying. He's trying to make excuses and talk, and he can't really move. Um, you see them under uncover this idea of hyperspace tracking and and how they together might be the reason or or the the, the solution mm-hmm. to this problem because Rose is a mechanic mm-hmm. and she's really gifted and she knows. How to disable the tracker because right. she p- calculates hyperspace tracking is probably very s- the same principle as, as active tracking, and she knows where to go on the ship and what to do when she gets there. And then Finn, his role in this is for what? Why does Finn need to be a part of this journey to Canto Bight to find the uh, the uh, the master code breaker and then to get onto Snoke's ship? Why does he need to be on Snoke's Snoke ship? Do you remember? Uh, well, he needs to be on Snoke's ships so he can who. Okay. Finn. Finn, yeah. Why has he got to be on the ship? Do you remember? No. I he's the one he that knows the, where the room is. Yeah, he mops. Oh, yeah. He mops. He's like, I'm, who's, who would know how to find the, the such and such or how to get in there? And he's like, the, guy the person mopped that mopped it. the, the, mopped right. the ship. Right. So, so, he, so this is where they go off. And they go off on this journey. Let's, take a, let's go to Canto Bite. Right? Finn's reaction to Canto Bite is very different Rose. from Rose's. It's completely the opposite. Uh, BB Nate, what is... You, you know, what do you... Or how did you do? You remember Finn's reaction being uh, to the entire planet of Canto by the casinos and everything? He says it's 
beautiful. It's it's amazing. It's all he ever wanted. It's great. It's his, his place. Yeah, he's like he awestruck. Loves it. He's like, yeah, he, it's like the the perfect place for him when he gets there because he, he's like he yeah. There's, I mean, there, it's riches. It's music. It's luxury and right. and it's all this other stuff and what does rose tell him to do when he's talking look, about look. why do you hate this place so much look it's closer. beautiful look more closely mm-hmm. and that's when rose starts to that's where we start to see the beginning of the change mm-hmm. of finn mm-hmm. in his hero's journey uh, in this storyline right because up to this point he's get away from the resistance get away from the first order save ray that's all he's about and then when he, she tells him to take a closer look at Canto Bite, what do they see, Samuel? Well, they see the uh, Fathers, I think I'm pronouncing Fa- it. Fathers, yeah. Uh, being like, essentially beaten to race or whatever. Uh, and, and, who's, and who are... And you see the trainer, you know, trying to train the one with the whip or whatever. And then he lashes out on Broom Boy. So it's not as pretty as... As, as you yeah, you just had to look just a little bit closer than, right. than the surface. And the, and the beauty and the luxury and everything else was actually being propped up by abuse and mm-hmm. and, and just sort Maltreatment. of... Maltreatment. Yeah, he, he, uh, you know, slavery. Mm-hmm. She talks about how she was a slave on a planet like this. Then she starts talking about the wealth on Canto Bite and all the people on Canto Bite are getting their wealth through what? Do you remember? Selling weapons to the First Order. Selling weapons to the First Order. And so... You start to see things that that are working in Finn through this, and then we you know we go through the whole they're imprisoned and they can't find the the guy with the they find the guy with the red palm loom, but then they get tased. they get captured and it's the whole DJ thing and they you know we've talked about Tabiri whatever his name is the broom boy and and Rose and Finn finding him and everything and they get off the planet and then they're on the ship with DJ. Mm-hmm. And DJ's in, inquiring to, um, or Finn is inquiring to, to DJ about the entire, you know, situation with Canto Bite and him making money off of selling weapons to the First Order. Yeah, he said, at least you're stealing from the bad guys the, right. and, and helping the good. What happens there, Samuel? Well, then DJ goes to the... Hollow chest table. Ch- it kind of looks like a hollow chest table, but it's, it's, it's not exactly. And then he says, let's see who figured out who owned this thing. And he does, and they say this guy got his money uh, as an arms dealer selling weapons for the First Order. So you see, like, a TIE fighter and stuff pop up, and then you see an X-wing. X-Wing pop up. Yeah. So he's selling weapons to both the First well, Order that and the his shit. No, it isn't, but the idea that, that Rose... I think you're right, Nathan, that's not... They stole that ship. Yeah. But the idea that Rose talks about on Canto Bite takes a different twist there because right. she says the wealth on Canto Bite comes from, was, c- comes from selling weapons to the First Order. Right. And what they're finding out is that the wealth on Canto Bite is not from just selling weapons to the First Order. It's selling weapons. And the, and the resistance is, by, is, is funding that wealth. And they're playing both sides. Right. Which is exactly who DJ's character is, by the way. He's playing both sides. He doesn't care. He's going for whatever works for him right. in this. He's a mercenary uh, on that. Um, and so you would think that it, I, w- I want to focus on this for just a second, BB Nate. You would think that if Finn is trying to escape the First Order, Finn is trying to re- escape the Resistance because he doesn't want to have anything to do with it. And now he's found out that um, the wealth on Canto Bite is raised by selling weapons to both sides, not just the First Order. Wouldn't you think that that would? Im- like solidify his desire to be a, separate from everything. I mean, wouldn't that I make would, sense? I would think so. No, because he he thinks if they're still selling weapons to the first order, then we still need to fight against it. So well, I, th- I mean, I, I think that I think it, it would. You would. I would. If I was on. If I was in Finn's shoes, and I don't want to have anything to do with this war, and then I find out that the. You know, the people that are selling weapons to the First Order are the same people selling weapons to the Resistance. And so there's this corruption on both sides. And it's just being propped up by this, you know, what they call in in our world the industrial, you know, um, military complex with it. You would think that he would be like, forget this whole thing. I just want to get away from it. But what ends up happening um, when they get on the... uh, Oh, there's a really interesting quote. I don't know if you guys have noticed it because I don't think we've talked about it. What's that? 
blip bloppity bloop. No, that's not. That's a different quote. <laughs> Love that. Blip bloppity bloop uh, by DJ. But anyway, <laughs> um, they're on Snoke's uh, destroyer, dreadnought, whatever it is. Right. They're on it. Devastator. Devastator. And DJ is working the um, mechanism, trying to get into the room with the tracker. Yeah. And Finn says, "Shouldn't we try to figure out a way to get off this?" ship or whatever uh, or I think that's what Rose says Rose yeah. asks yeah, him that Rose. what does Finn answer I know I think the I escape have an idea about that. no he's like I know I know where the closest escape pods oh, are oh yeah 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 what does Rose say to him <laughs> of, course oh, of course you, you do. do right like she's still upset Bitter. frustrated with him yeah too. I noticed that in the movie mm-hmm. like she's, of course you do she yeah like she's this, like this. oh my gosh you are you really aren't the resistance hero that I thought you were You've right. just always been looking for a way to escape and run from everything mm-hmm. instead of stay there. And she's and that just is reconfirmed when he says, I know where the closest escape pods are. It just sort of goes right back to the moment that they met and how she's still upset right, about yeah. that. I thought that was really interesting. Mm-hmm. There's a scene, though, that we have to go back and I'm thinking about it. The scene on the ship on the way to um, Snoke's uh, ship where DJ's asking about a deposit. Mm. And... Money. He's yeah. He's wanting the necklace, the uh, right. Haitian smelt Haitian necklace smelt. Yeah. that Rose has, and Finn takes gets really upset and offended right. that he's asking for this. And you start to see here that there's something going on between him and Rose. Rose. He's not. A, I don't think it's a, a romantic thing for Finn. No, I think it's just a friendship and a loyalty. What we do know about Finn is that he's loyal to people that he care very very quickly. Yeah. He he he's loyal to Ray. His entire life, he's been like he's had nobody. He's loyal to Poe uh-huh. at the beginning of Force Awakens. Right and very, away. He's loyal to Ray all right the way away. through this, and now he's become very loyal. When he cares about someone, he cares about them deeply. Right, because no one's really cared for him because he was in the First Order. Exactly. And he, was he just this. He feels people that are showing him, you know, him treating him like a real person, right. like Finn, and he's wanting to protect like, them. Because when the, he sees Ray for the first time, he's like, "You looked at me like no one else had." Right. That's why he he connected with her. So exactly. Quickly. And he's doing the same thing with Rose here. So now they're on the ship and and we see DJ use that part of the necklace, the charm, the Haitian smelt to short circuit things and open up the panel. And he gives it back to Rose. Yeah. So and that's yeah. when the whole question takes place about what do we do? You know, should we look for right. a way to get off this ship? And that's when they all take place. They get captured. We know that the uh, BB, I think it's BB9E. Has uh, tipped off the the uh, right. first order and and they capture him. You should have just given him a new paint job. Given <laughs> anyway, um, a chopper. Like Sabine's a chopper paint not job. around though. Well, well, I don't think they had time for it. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, we're getting off topic. But they're on there and they get captured and they're in this uh, with all the soldiers and the machinery and the the weaponry and the the ships and everything else. The and, foundry, really. and we find out DJ has been the one that that has. T- Tipped off the resistance, or tipped off the first order about the resistance plan to yeah. send the transports to crate, and that's when you see. I think that's the moment that Finn loses it. I think that's where Finn goes and all in for the resistance at this point because I think, and you guys tell me what you think about this. <laughs> and if you're listening on the podcast, you know, follow us oh. on Twitter, comment on on the the, the uh, posts on on the on the podcast. And let us know what you think about this. I think that in that moment when DJ's betrayed Finn and Rose and the Resistance, that Finn sees himself in DJ in just a little way. He sees somebody that's only looking out for himself and willing to do whatever it takes to take care of himself versus others. And he gets, he's ashamed of what he, uh, that he could have been that person. What do you guys think about that? Now that I think about it, probably. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, I could see that. Yeah. Because otherwise, there's no reason for him to become who he becomes later right. on in the movie. Right, the selfless hero. Right, which is what happens, right? So, we, I mean, th- there's this really crazy battle between him and Phasma, and we could talk about that. I actually think it's not that big of a battle. I think it's a little cheesy at times. He's jumping in the air, swinging, and he does the I whole Back to the Future, rising up off the Back to the Future 2 with the uh, I've floating seen those to movies one. Right, well, he's uh, in Back to the Future two. He falls off of a three. of a hill, or or yeah, maybe three. I don't know. He's the flying DeLorean time machine. Marty falls off of a, a building or a, something like that. Lands on the DeLorean, floats back up, and beats up the bad guy. And this is exactly what Finn does with Phasma. It's cool, it was okay, but it was sort of overdone. 
Um, not to mention the fact that Phasma has a gun at this point, if you watch the movie, and she's not shooting. I don't know. Do they run out of bullets on this version of a gun? I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. Why but don't anyway. Jedi just use the Force the whole time? Why do they just use lightsabers? Uh, That's not how the Force works. I don't know. Maybe it is. Okay. So anyway, um, so they get to Crate, right? And and Finn gets in one of the ski speeder things. Skins, yeah. And they go on. And the battle's going completely against them, right? And Poe, we'll talk about his hero's journey on a different episode coming up. But... Poe calls off the attack because it's not going to work hopeless. and everybody's, it's hopeless. And it's, and he's learned his lesson, which we'll talk about in another one. What does Finn do, BB Nate? He keeps flying into the mouth of the battering ram battering cannon. Ram cannon. Mm-hmm. Battering ram cannon. Yeah. He's willing to do what? Sacrifice, Sacrifice his, own his own life. And for why though? To save the resistance. Ray's gone. He's not saving Ray in this case. She's on the Millennium Falcon. She's okay. Yeah. If she wants to be saved, she's saved Mm -hmm. with it. Well, now that you think about it, a little bit later when Rose saves Finn, there we go. Rose does say saving the things that we Wait, wait, wait. We'll come back to that in a second. Don't don't give away the punchline to Finn's story um, with this. Finn's and Rose's story. So, you know, he's like going full onto the cannon. There's nothing. His gun gets, I don't know if you guys realize it. He can't shoot into it. That's why okay. he, he does what he does. Yeah, he can't. His gun gets the heat from the battering ram getting ready to fire, um, melts, melts his guns, and there's only one way for him to stop this from his perspective, which is fly into the mouth of the cannon and just, and, and hopefully destroy it um, with it. And instead, Rose comes swooping in and runs into his ski ski speeder and knocks him off. And he gets out and he asks her when he finally gets to her and unstraps her, and she's awake barely. Why did you do that? I was almost there when I did that. Yeah. Why did you do that? And what does and this is what you get to say it now, uh, okay. BB he Nate. Says, he says, Hold on. Oh, "Okay, as long as you don't ruin BB Nate's." No, he says, "Why did you stop me?" Right. Yeah. Why did you stop me? And BB Nate, what does Rose tell him? Is, we are not. This isn't about fighting the things that we hate. It's about saving. The that's not how we're going to win this war. Yeah, right. that's not how Fight, we're by I, fighting the things we hate. I saved you, dummy. Yeah, I saved. <laughs> okay, so she says, "I saved you, dummy." Uh, that's how we're going to win this fight, not by fighting what we hate. fighting what we hate, but Save by saving love. what we love. love. Right. And that's a big moment for him. And she kisses him, expressing affection of some sort. I don't know if she's got a crush on him now, or <laughs> if this is just her way of of showing him what she said. But because she has been working around pipes, <laughs> absolutely. And so they get back in, and I think there's more to this now because because Finn now he's like all in on this idea. He is all about saving everybody mm-hmm. at this point, and he's this new. I think he's a new leader now for this oh, yeah. new rebellion because he's in the bunker and he sees Luke Skywalker going says, out, go and out. Luke is help. fighting Kylo and he's fighting him by himself. And what does he say, Sam? Yeah, we need, to go, go, help we need him. to go help him. He's right, and Poe po understands what's going on. That's part of Poe's journey. But Finn's journey is, I'm willing to sacrifice my life and everything for this resistance at this point. Which goes back to that ending sake, uh, phrase from Luke. When Luke says, um, everything you uh, said is wrong, you just said was wrong. The, re- um, the rebellion is reborn this day, and you see Poe. The uh, war has just begun, and you see Finn. And, you see Finn. and so Finn is a, gener- is a new leader. Mm-hmm. I think in the rebellion. I think, I think that since Curry Fisher is now gone, that Poe is probably going to be the new leader of the rebellion. That yeah, but I think that Poe. very similar I to the way to we... say Haldo, but because she would be a perfect. Um... She's dead. Yeah, but I was thinking. I, I keep remembering. Oh yeah, she uh, she yeah she's dead. She's dead. <laughs> so, but I think Finn is sort of the Lando Calrissian now. Of this story arc, where he was yeah. out for himself, thinking about himself, you know, trying to to manipulate the scenario, and then suddenly now he's 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 all in. He's a new general. Yeah, sort of. he betrayed them, or so he thought, and was like, mistake. "I'm not going to make that mistake again." Right? Yeah, I think that's it. So that's cool. Anything else you guys want to talk about Finn's story arc on this? I know we've gone long, but it's a good story. Not really. No. Okay. I think they pretty much covered it. <laughs> all right. So let's move to the next topic. Okay, so we are transitioning to Solo, and we have still yet to get a Solo trailer. Unfortunately. And, and if you're watching right now on Facebook Live or on YouTube, you'll notice I have my 
beautiful and um, massive Millennium Falcon Air Hog um, here for us to, to look at on the table. If you're not watching us on YouTube um, at, later on or following us on Facebook, um, what's wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, and, we, and you can keep up with our content there. And you can actually see what we look like when we record this podcast, not just hear it's us later. Pretty. It is, well, you know, we are Saturday morning Star Wars fans and we're <laughs> uh, doing this. But anyway, um, we did get something finally. It wasn't supposed Even to come though, out, I don't yeah, think. Although I start to wonder, with all the Lego leaks with Star Wars stuff, you start to wonder if they're not planned leaks by Lucasfilm right. Disney. But anyway, we saw some photos of some new Lego yeah. uh, stuff from the Solo movie. Yeah. What do you... <laughs> Sammy's excited. Sammy... Nathan's sort of a Lego fan. Oh, BB Nate. He's correcting me. BB Nate. Nathan. Nate. Is, uh, you know, okay with, Star, with Legos. He yeah. likes Legos. But Sam, you're a Lego fan. Like, in a big way, right? Like, if you could be... A Lego, whatever that is, an engineer or whatever. Master, I think they're called Master Builder. Master Builder at Legoland yeah, here in exactly. California. You would do that, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. All right, so why don't we let you talk about what you saw on the Lego Star Wars leak? So they came out and they, they released a, a few other like little ones. Like There was a little like new speeder looking thing. Kind of looked like a scout bike. I think it was like a range. Wait, 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 wait. We should probably stop. And, and acknowledge the fact that if you're really a, like a super spoiler sensitive person, oh, yeah. you may want to take a pause for the next five or six minutes as we talk about this because there may be some spoilers in that. <laughs> all right. So anyway, all right. Keep going. Lego Star Wars Solo. So yeah, there was like this little new looks like a kind of like a scout trooper with this little bike. And then there was also this um, new land speeder. Looks a lot like a car. <laughs> Minus the wheels. Like, yeah. almost identical. And, and then, didn't we see... I mean, if you're looking at spoilers, photos, early stuff from Solo, didn't we see that photo, a photo of that speeder? Yeah, yes. we did. We did. Uh, it was on set. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was a leaked photo. And then uh, we see a different version of the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Now, it, it's... it's Instead of this, like, beige, gray-looking color, it's totally white. And instead of like red detailing on it, it's got like blue. Yeah, it's got those blue spots. And on the, stuff like the, that. the blaster turrets are different. The antenna's different. And you know the two front little, um, I don't know what to call them, cargo. arms or whatever yeah, with cargo. that space in the middle? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Those for, the fork at the front of the yeah. Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it's filled in for some yeah. reason. Yeah, because... And, and it just, it looks different. And it's kind of unsettling. <laughs> I don't know why. Because we're so used to seeing... This sort of a Millennium Falcon, as opposed to the... Well, yeah, it's the only Millennium Falcon white we've ever blue, seen. and it's just totally bizarre. Yeah, like, the only difference we've seen on the Falcon was a different antenna. Uh-huh. So... What were you going to say about the front, the fork well, area? the front it, is a cargo space holder, and then it does become a smuggler, but I think before that, and what we see with the the, the new Millennium Falcon, yeah. is... I think he was mainly and solely a racer. Well, I, and that kind of goes back to bloodlines because he's a racer. Yeah, and, and you yeah. Know, that's what he was doing. Maybe that's what's going on. And it could be this is the way that Lando had the ship mm-hmm. um, before. And, and, and you know, if you remember from uh, episode four, the first time we see Fon Solo in the cantina when he's talking to Obi Wan and Luke, and Luke's talking about this hunk of junk. Is it fast? Blah blah blah. <laughs> And he says, you've never heard of the Millennium Yeah, you've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? And he talks about, which we'll have to talk about in a second. We'll <laughs> stop here and, and come back to that. But he says, I made a lot of modification, my own personal my, oh, modification. Special modification. Special modification. Yeah. So, you know, he's cha- from the time he gets it from Lando to the time we see him in episode four, he admits, the canon already admits, that there's been a lot of changes to the right. ship over time. And so we get to actually see that. But I think that the most... And you started to talk about this, BB Nate. Yeah. The most amazing thing about this is what they're calling it on the, the box. Yeah, they're calling, it, they're calling it the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon. Now, my favorite character in all of Star Wars is Solo. And it's been a dream of mine to, to find out the story... To see this, yeah. ...of the Kessel Run I really want to taking see place. I, I think that it's, it's like... A it's short, gonna happen. We get to see the Kessel Run in the solo movie. What do you think about that, BB Nate? Uh, it it would be very cool to see that. Is it, I feel like it's like the understatement of the century. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool it would be to pretty see cool. the Kessel Run. Kind of 
I want to see another race in Star Wars that's not the pod, the pod race. race. Yeah, cause... Jar Jar Binks yeah. and Young. Explain Nate. Samuel why that that seems to be a you know you were talking about it too, Nate, BB Nate. That Samuel, why was that the case? Why is that a big deal? Why do we know that Han Solo is a racer? Well, because uh, you know we talked about the bloodlines, and he he goes back after like um, episode six and all that, and if, if a few years later he goes back. And starts training racers and stuff for, for, for things like that. Because he's an infamous racer right. at this point. Because yeah. he made the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs, right. which is a race. But I don't well, know. Is the, is the Kessel Run a, a, a race? Yeah, it's a race. So I, where, where, How do I not know this? Where uh, do you know this from? Yeah, it's, it's a race, I'm pretty like, sure. Because I, I, I think I heard this somewhere. So parsecs is not time. No, it's a distance. It's a distance. Yeah. And the way that you finish By calculating time, hyperspace jumps, right? You're flying through a series of black holes. No way. So you you shave off parsecs by trying to get as close to a black hole as possible to make the run in, in shortest time. And that's a testament to both the piloting skills of the pilot and the condition of the ship. Because Jeez. the ship has to be in really good condition. Oh my gosh. And the pilot has to be a really good pilot. So to be able to fly next to black holes and stuff, you got to be a good pilot. You got to have a good ship. So that's how the parsecs thing comes into play. That's, that's amazing. I did not know that. Yeah. I might that's be true. Wrong. All of it. I, mean, I might be wrong on the race. I'm pretty sure it's a race. Yeah, I think it's a race. I I don't know, but I feel like there's something from a comic that I've read. I forget which comic it is. I think it's a Han Solo I, comic you're thinking of. Yeah, it's a Han Solo comic. And which he was actually... Yeah, the Han Solo comic. He, uh, he, was, he was recruited by the Rebellion... To do a race. Yeah. And for yeah. a solo book? Yeah. A comic. Was it after he's it's after episode it's four? It's like right, right between four and five. Okay, okay. And I'm not into the comics as much as you guys yeah, are. Yeah, I we haven't finished the series, so we haven't actually seen the race, but we just know that there is a race. And what way. happens during it is the Empire comes Shows during out. during the race. Wow. And that's where the comic ends. Yeah, but anyway. He was recruited by the rebellion to race, so he's a racer. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I mean, obviously he's a racer. So, but I, I mean, so you're telling me that the Kessel Run is a race, mm-hmm. and we're going to see this Millennium Falcon in this movie flying as close to black holes as possible in order to shave distance mm-hmm. off of the Kessel Run in order to win this race. We're yeah, going to see him and take, Chewie doing take this. Take that with a grain of salt because that may not be canon. Go ahead. Checked, but I'm pretty sure that that's canon, and that's what it is. Wow! I don't remember where I heard that though, so I can't I can't tell you whether that's well, true. That's or amazing. Not. Well, listen, I forgot to mention this earlier, but I wanted to um, give a shout out when we on my introduction section here um, to our Twitter follower. They their title is "Let the Past Die." I have a feeling that has a, re- a Last Jedi reference to it, mm. but their actual Twitter handle is at jcjpl. They have been just absolutely awesome in the last week engaging with us on Twitter, sharing us like 30 or 40 engagements. Thank you so much, JCJPL. Let the past die. If you're not following them on Twitter, there's great Star Wars content there. Make sure you follow them on that, but I wanted to give them a shout out. Um, Well, I'm excited about, you know, this is the first thing that we've heard from this, you know, outside of set photos by Ron Howard and the fact that they're firing directors <laughs> about the solo movie, yeah, and I'm pretty. I mean, pumped we about got it. the yeah. You, oh, you were just talking about it. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, speaking of set photos, well, okay. Well, I guess we're going to go to the next topic now. Let's keep talking solo, though. Yeah. Speaking of set photos, there was one. This is. A segue into the larger topic, but there was one picture that Ron Howard took. I forget who the character was, but one ready. Well, it's user. him and Paul Bettany who plays Vision in the oh, really? uh, Avengers it's... movies oh. um, and that kind of thing. It's yeah, Paul yeah. Bettany. He's in this movie. He was brought in by Ron Howard. Yes, he is. He was brought in by. Yeah, he was. Uh-huh. It's not Bettany. B e t t a n y. Yes, it it's is. It's Bettany. Uh, Bettany Bettany. I don't know how you pronounce it. I Tomato just potato. To, to, tomato p- potato, right, exactly. Right. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, so one Reddit user... This is not going very well. I got a bad feeling about uh, this. Yeah, let's move into this one. All right. Can you, anyway, uh, anyway, go ahead. All right, so he's so with Pel- potato potato. Reddit oh. user was looking in the background and he saw a silhouette of what looks just like the helmet of a Mandalorian. Yeah, I mean, I've seen the photo. Nathan, a BB Nate... 
You've seen the photo too. What yes. do you think? Does it look like a Mandalorian helmet to you? Um, it's well, someone did. Oh no 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 no! That does it look like a Mandalorian helmet to you? Yeah, it's right. not. It's like you can't. It's exact. It's not like a maybe. It's a Mandalorian helmet. No, it's a Mandalorian helmet. So what does that mean? Helmet. We might have Boba Fett in Han Solo. Wow. What do you think about that? Do you think it would be great? First of all, I'll let you say, Nate, or excuse me, I, I'm breaking my new, new Year's resolution. I call my sons by their other names. Dads out there listening to this, if you've got multiple children, I'm sure you do the same thing. I'm All the time, I'll talk to Sam, and I'll call him Nate, and I'll talk to Nate, and I'll call him Sam. And so that was one of my New Year's resolutions was to try to break myself of that habit. But even here on this podcast... I just called Sam Nate. Well, you're I'm, doing pretty good. I'm getting better at it. But Samuel the Hutt, your favorite Star Wars character is? Boba Fett. What do you think about the possibility of Boba Fett being in this movie? And how do you think, is there anything in canon that would suggest that Han Solo has a relationship with Boba Fett before episode five? Or episode four in the special edition? Probably. I mean, I'm not sure that there's de- definitive evidence, but he's been working with Jabba for a while. That was, you know, they were talking about how he's done many, many runs and he's dropped his cargo at the first sign of Imperial ships or whatever. So, and it looks like Boba Fett was already with Jabba, so they probably had a run in or two at, by, by then. Um, I want to see him, but I feel like we're trying to cram too much in here because... Ron Howard has said that the Empire is going to be in this movie. Well, they have to be. The Empire is all over right. the galaxy. And it's going to have a relatively strong role. And we're going to have the Kessel Run, right? Which is Most awesome. likely. And then we got Boba Fett. I think we're trying to cram too much stuff in here. Mm. So something's going to have to dial down. Like, it's going to have to either be the Kessel Run's kind of minor, and Boba Fett's the big bad guy, and then you got the Empire kind of there. Or maybe it's all Boba Fett, or I just said that. Uh, maybe it's all the Kessel Run, and then Boba Fett's got a bit more of like a cameo, and the Empire's just kind of there. Yeah, I don't think that you're going to make Boba Fett a major character in this. I think he would be a, can, a cameo if he's in you this think, movie. Yeah. I think you've got the bad guy being the Empire, because he doesn't, you know, Han Solo's trying to avoid any Imperial entanglements. And right. He's got a dishes um, cargo. cargo before episode four, because the Empire's boarding his ship. Mm-hmm. And so there's already been connections with the Empire here. I think Boba Fett, they may be an introduction to who Boba Fett is in on Han Solo's story yeah. in this movie, and then the Castle Run. What, now, Nathan, you were getting ready to say something about other ideas of who this Mandalorian might, helmet might belong to. Uh, well, it may just be Mandalorian. Which or would still maybe, be cool. Yeah, it would, it would still be cool, because Mandalorians are cool. Have we seen any other Mandalorians in the movies other than the Fets? Well, I mean, you got Jango Fett and Boba Fett, but no, we haven't seen anything. Seen any of them. I mean, they're obviously uh, prominent in the Clone Wars oh, series, yeah, Clone Wars and they're prominent in the Rebel series. They're a major storyline in both mm. of those. Um, but as far as the movies go, we you haven't seen the Fats. Yeah, mm. so it'd be interesting to see that. What, but yeah, here, so any Mandalorian? Yeah, but what about? Yeah. Is there a specific Mandalorian some people have theorized about? Maybe Sabine Wren. That that's a prominent theory right now. Do you think that that's going to happen? Mm, no. She'd be I, really young. The character. No, 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 no. This, no. Well, it depends. Yeah. No, she, she'd be. Yeah. Her stature is really thin. That you see the character, and you can just tell that it's tall and beefy. Mm. So it, I don't think it's beefy. Yeah. beefy. But beefy. maybe the rivalry between Han Solo and Boba Fett. Starts during the Kessel Run. Oh man, where they're, they're racing and Boba the Fett. Maybe they're racing. That's what I, that that's, would be weird. That would be Boba a whole Fett's, new spin Boba on Boba Fett's Fett. Not a racer. He's a bounty hunter. Yeah. Maybe there's a bounty on. on maybe on somebody's Ted. trying to, to. Yeah. Or maybe they paid Boba to sabotage. Who him. knows? All of this is speculation. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Oh wait. Um, so I want to quickly. You forgot to do your shout out. I forgot. I was the one that did good this time. Good job, Nate. <laughs> BB Nate did great. B. So B. Nate it's not great. that we don't care. It's just we forget and we get into the topic and we're like, you're having this heated discussion. So I want to uh, have a shout out to Terry um, Houston. Um, his Twitter handle is at Terry uh, Four uh, Perez. Yeah, um, so it's and, Terry T E R R Y the number four right P R E Z Terry Four Perez. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, 
Uh, so we want to quickly do a shout out to Terry uh, Houston for inspiring this topic. Yeah, now let me explain what that is. This morning I put out there that we were going to be talking about Finn. We were going to talk about the Lego leak. And then I said, we aren't sure what the third topic is going to be. And Terry, you suggested we talk about people we wanted to, like stars we wanted to cameo in this movie. Or maybe... Um, Stars we didn't want to have a cameo in this movie. Jar Jar. <laughs> Jar Jar. Well, that's not stars. These are like actors. Like Christian Bale was rumored this week to have had possibly what? had a role. We're like, a ri- the they were go- yeah, Christian they were go- like he was yeah. auditioning for the Star Wars solo movie and didn't get cast. And so that's what a cameo like tip thing is. You know, like when uh, Simon Pegg was in uh, was Unkar yeah, Plutt yeah. and stuff like that. And we don't know enough about the star cameo stuff, so we decided that we'd talk about characters we yeah. wanted to see in this. So that's how you inspired this topic, Terry. So, well, cool. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Oh, well, there's, there's other people. So we talked about Boba Fett like crazy. Yeah. But are there, is there any other star or any other character that we would want to see? Uh, Darth Vader. I would really like to see. Yeah, I mean... I mean, he's been rumored to be in this movie. Yeah, so Spencer Wilding was rumored to have a, car, a part in this. Spencer Wilding is the uh, actor who has been portraying... Uh, who portrayed... Darth Vader in Rogue One, and he's got a part in this movie, they know, and then just before the end of shooting, a rumor came out that there was a Darth Vader on set, and so there's a possibility we do see Darth Vader, which goes back to what you were talking about, Samuel, about the Darth, or the Imperial connection to this. We just don't, I don't know if we've seen anything in canon to suggest that there's any relationship or connection between Vader and Solo before we see you know, Han Solo in episode four. Maybe there's four. a connection between Vader and Boba. They know each because, other in episode five. He says no, no disintegration because he's already. He that means he has to have. Well, that'd be Boba cool. Before. Wow. Maybe there's a certain. Maybe the cargo that Han is holding is something the Empire wants. Yeah, who knows? Uh, wow, it's I it's. I, it would be cool to see the relationship be between Vader and Boba Fett. Yeah, because they do know. I mean, if we let's go back to Clone Wars. Think about Clone Wars, the series. Is does Anakin? No young Boba throughout that, or is there any connection or, or relationship oh, at all? I think I think there's been something. Okay, if you're listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube, and you remember anything from Clone Wars that suggests there's a connection between Anakin and young Boba Fett, uh, reply to us on Twitter regarding this, or comment in the, yeah, in the YouTube, and let us know what, what that is. There was, a, there was a pretty good amount of Boba Fett in the Clone Wars. Yeah, there was. Um, well, it, it, there's one other idea. Um, that's gone out there. There's a character that has been announced to be a part of the solo movie named uh, Dryden Voss, I think is what they... Yeah, something like that. Drayden Voss. Drayden Voss. You say Droopy McCool. Which, not Droopy McCool. <laughs> I hope he... That's the cameo. Does Droopy and McCool make us an appearance <laughs> in the Han Solo oh, movie? that'd be great. We need to add that to our poll. We'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, um, Droopy McCool, yeah, that'd be great. Anyway, so there's this Drayden <laughs> Voss... That has been t- announced as being a character in the solo movie, which then has caused a lot of speculation to rise up regarding a Legends character that was brought into canon through the Clone Wars. Okay. And then a whole book was done with this character called Dark Disciple. Mm-hmm. And his name was Quinlan Voss. If you remember him from previous Star Wars uh, stories, you know, movies, and, or excuse me, b- uh, books and, and Clone Wars and stuff, he's sort of a Native American feel. Uh, yeah. Jedi yeah. Uh, from the prequel area, the Jedi, you know, uh, the Jedi era, where he, you know, you were talking about this earlier, Sam. So, yeah, I forget the exact name for the Force power, but basically it allows you to um, take an object, and through the Force you can sense the object's past, so you can figure out previous owners, where the object's been, yada, yada, yada. He also is able to use the Force to, like, track footsteps and stuff, so... He, very much like a Native American in, in their connection with nature and such, he's kind of has that feel with the Force, and he, he has abilities that you really you never see anywhere else. Yeah, he's he's, pretty, he was a pretty, pretty awesome, cool. and he's a fan favorite. Yeah, you oh, know, yeah. I mean, the Dark Disciple book, people love that book. Um, and, and I'm trying to remember who wrote Dark Disciple. Does anybody remember? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna look it up. So anyway, Nate, uh, BB Nate, what do you think about the idea of maybe this Drayden Voss being Quinlan Voss? Um. No, it would, it would be cool. It's just he's such a small character. Yes, he is a fan favorite, and I do know that. But well, it's Boba just, is kind of a small character. Well, yeah, Boba and Phasma. Been, I mean, they were like characters that everybody loves that have like 
a total of like 48 seconds worth of screen time. <laughs> well, I think Phasma has more screen time than Boba. Oh, yeah, I think she does. I think she does. Yeah. She does. Yeah. So yeah, I, guess I was oh, looking it up. Christy Golden, who wrote Inferno Squad, mm-hmm. um, is the one that wrote the Dark Disciple book. And it's Do a very look, popular book. Check to see if Quinlan Vos has, has died. Hmm. I don't remember if he died or, or not in either Order 66 or sometimes in Clone Wars. Because he might have died during the Clone Wars. I don't know. Let's look it up. So anyway, what, what would you think about having him in this? Um, it would be cool to bring in someone from the uh, Clone Wars series. And Sammy looks like he has something he wants to say. So what is that? Well, there's two things. <laughs> One, Quinlan Voss and Han Solo, I think they met. I think the article said that they have met in canon when Han Solo was like a teenager. Like Whoa. really, really young. Really? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I could be wrong on that. But maybe Han and Quinlan cross paths and Darth Vader is hunting Quinlan. For, the last, for another Jedi. Oh, he's doing a Jedi hunt. And maybe Han Solo helps him. No. no, because Han Solo's mindset when it comes to Imp- the, the Jedi Imperial. is that it's all a job. Opie religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. True, true. <laughs> that is true. Well, it is true. I mean, except he, he's going to say later. It's true. All of it. When he talks about the Force. So anyway, um, right. I don't know. That would be kind of neat to see... Vader hunting down a Jedi. Maybe I think you do problem. that. Things get a little complicated. I think we're trying to throw too much in here. Okay, as far as Wikipedia says, which is like the uh, uh, you know Star Wars beginning and ending source of all Star Wars knowledge. It's right? like the holocron um, of Star Wars knowledge. Va, um, Voss was a general at the end of the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. Um, would join the fight on Kashyyyk. Mm-hmm. Uh, shortly thereafter, Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, Palpatine, secretly Darth Sidious, transformed the Republic into the Galactic Empire. The Jedi Order was destroyed. Clone Wars came to an end. Voss, however, was listed among the presumed survivors ah. of the new Galactic Emperor's Jedi Purge. So could we see Darth Vader hunting. and Boba Fett Ooh. hunting down yeah. Quinlan Voss being helped by Han Solo? That would make sense because <laughs> Quinlan Voss, he, he, he's able to probably cover his tracks and he's able to, to, to you know, and he's able to follow other tracks. Why not hire an experienced bounty hunter to help hunt him down? I think it makes perfect sense. I love it. I think this is Woo! it's going to be like all Last Jedi speculation. It's all going to be wrong. Oh, yeah. But it's sure a heck of a lot of it's fun, fun. Make, uh, making all those connections. Hey, there. we don't have podcasts if we don't do this sort of stuff and make these. Tell uh, us what you guys think about that idea, that storyline. Han Solo helping Quinlan Voss escape pursuit um, in Jedi Purge from Darth Vader being hunted by Boba Fett. Because why? If if he's met him before, then maybe he knows him as just a friend in general, so he doesn't really care about whether he's a Jedi or not. So why would? Well, in the Dark Disciple book, Quinlan Voss is pretending not to be a Jedi almost up until the very end with the Saga. I think that might be where he meets Han Solo. It might be. No, 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 because that's prequel area. Oh, that's prequel area. Okay. Okay. All right, pretty cool. All right. Anything else? Anything else you guys wanted to talk about today? We haven't really planned anything else like this, but I think we covered just about everything. Yeah. We went, we, you know, originally like the first episode was twenty nine minutes, and the second episode was thirty four, and every time since then it's been like an hour, <laughs> right? And we try, like, wait, we say we're gonna, do we're gonna get it down. In fact, what did you say before we started this when we were looking over the show? It's gonna be a short episode. episode. Yeah, it wasn't. And short. then we started talking about Finn, and that went on for like. Well, and then I think, I think the hot solo went long too. Anyway, Nate, were you going to say something? Yeah, we forgot something. What we forget? A really big thing, which I'm surprised we forgot about. What? Resurrection DLC for Battlefront 2. Well, oh, oh, we forgot. We'll have to talk about that in another episode. Resurrection DLC. That'll be next week. Dang it. All right. Anything else you can <laughs> think of? Nah, that's... The Resurrection nah. DLC was pretty freaking am- amazing, by the way. Uh, love that. Which uh, is a Christy Golden tie-in because Ver- Iden Verso yeah, yeah, yeah. is re- is an Inferno Squad, which she wrote the book of. It's just all a symbiotic relationship, right? It's, it's like the force. Those. It moves between all of this. right? Now. Okay. All right, so let's talk about next week's poll. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't really help no. but giggle. All right, um, <laughs> this week's poll. Which character would you like most like to see appear in the solo movie. Boba Fett, Darth Vader, Quinlan Voss, or someone else Other. reply with your comment. 
below on cool. that. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening in. Uh, please uh, subscribe if you listen to this on iTunes. You listen to this on Google Play. We just got an announcement this week that we have been approved to be a part of iHeartRadio. So within the next day or so, we're going to have millions more fans that are able at least to find our podcast through iHeartRadio. We're excited Woo-hoo. about that. Um, we're getting lots of love on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, follow us at Tatooine Sons. That's in S O N S, like <laughs> my two sons. Samuel hey. the Hutt and BB Nate. Um, so tap, at Tatooine Sons on Twitter. Um, look us up on Facebook yeah. under the same way. Look us up at YouTube Didn't the we same also way. also just get uh, featured in Spreaker? No. We're be- please you know, oh, yeah, yeah, send yeah. your positive thoughts and vibes to us. We've been uh, uh, submitted to be free- featured as, as a featured podcast on Spreaker. So uh, please, um, you know, we- we'd love for that to happen. We'll let you know um, if that gets approved. Yeah, yeah. Um, with that um, but you know again this week be nice to each other Star Wars fans this this, uh, this real ugly side that's been creeping up on social media since The Last Jedi can we please just try to be kind to each other it's a movie folks let's be <laughs> nice um, and enjoy ourselves and above all again may the force be with you are you brainless? I never ask that question until after I've done it we're smarter than this. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. <laughs> <laughs>